Yeah, good day and welcome back to my channel where I'm working on modernizing this beautiful old 1980s Shoblin CNC lathe. Since I'm waiting for parts this week, I think I'll do a little grinding job, make up a tool to fix something that's been bugging me a little bit. One of the nice things about a CNC mill is you can chamfer around the edges of all the parts quite easily. And for that, I've just been using this six millimeter carbide center drill. But because it's only a small diameter and two flutes, it takes forever to go around the parts. Stefan Gottesfinter did a really good how-to video on how to grind a chamfer cutter out of uh, an old end mill using his D-bit grinder. So I've got this uh, half inch end mill where the edges are so chipped out. I mean, I've had this for years, long before I had a mill. I think I bought this at the best store on earth, Boeing Surplus Renton, back when it used to be there. Anyway, for years it was my only end mill and I used to use it for counter boring on the lathe and it's been pretty chipped out. I did look at sharpening it, but uh, I think you'd have to grind so much back. What I'll do is grind the chamfer tool on the back end of this. Mail time. Oh good, that's the main thing I was waiting for. Belts. These are the new X and Y axis belts for the Shoblin. Yeah, I wasn't gonna put 45 year old scungy old belts back in. You know, when I disassembled the Shoblin, I needed a 32 millimeter ring spanner to pull off some of the lead screw nuts. And I had one of these. And you think I can find this? No way. So I bought another one, which of course means that the one I lost is definitely gonna show up tomorrow. Otherwise, to get up to the minimum order for Meadler, I just got a bit of clamping hardware, which I needed anyway. I don't own the flute grinding attachment for the uh, Clarkson, so I'm gonna have to make up a bit of a Rube Goldberg sort of a setup. Take off the uh, universal head. I need a diamond wheel for this. I really hope I have enough wheel height for this setup. It's going to be quite high. I'm gonna to have to use the three angle vise. Now this is my indexer. Okay, well I can already see that that setup's not gonna work because I need to angle the indexer up 45 degrees and still be under the wheel. Plus the vise mounted normally like this so that it's offset towards the wheel. I can only tilt down, not up. So I'd have to reverse it. That'd move it too far from the wheel. Hmm. There's always another solution with a klaxon. Well, after a whole bunch of mucking around with pretty much all of my fastening and tool holding tools, just my little drill vise clamped down to the table. I've got the top part of the table rotated 90 degrees to the bottom part. So I'll be feeding like this, but this was just easier to get the whole thing set up. And my indexer is rather precarious, but should hopefully be sturdy enough for grinding. I've got it set to roughly 30 degrees, it's really not important. It's just a gullet. So I just set that as roughly the angle I could get out of it. And first I'll go through and gash this for the flutes. My understanding is that tungsten carbide dust is uh, carcinogenic. So I'm gonna be wearing a mask, get dust filter, and I'll vacuum as much as I can. Hey, and congratulations to Boeing for launching their Starliner capsule to the ISS for its test flight. I hope this mission and its return go smoothly this time. With the four flutes now ground, I no longer need the dividing head. From here, I can divide off the flutes themselves. So I'll switch now to the normal work head. Luckily, I've got a Clarkson bush for half inch, so that's good. So 
on a 90 degree countersink, so let's tilt this up to 45 degrees. Nope, that's not going to work because I've got a... Oh man. Nope, that's not going to work because I've got a height problem again. So I'll set that back to zero. I'll swivel the whole table. Well, after a bit of mucking around, I think I've got a setup that'll work. I had to reverse the, the bracket here. I'm now going to be cutting the relief angles on the sides, so I need a cup wheel. Now in the next setup, I need to cut both the 45 degree angle here, and also the back relief of the cutting edge, which should be about 10 degrees according to Stefan. This is a larger cutter, so we're going for, let's, let's try 20 degrees. Now using a gauge block, and eyeballing it, it'll be pretty easy to set this up to about zero degrees, but what we need is 10 degrees. So how am I gonna set that? So now all I need to do to index it is I have a finger on one of the flutes, so I can spin around between flutes, and I just have to set the length of that finger so the resulting angle is 10 degrees. It's about zeroed on the table, and I'd say that's close enough. I guess the chamfer tool could also be used as a countersink. In aviation, the rivets used to put aircraft together have a 100 degree countersink instead of the more normal 90 or 120. So I've just set up a clock to make sure I've got back relief. So there's the high point there. And it drops back. There's a little bit of a kick at the very end. It looks good. Okay, that tooth's a bit longer, about half a thou longer but it also drops off nicely. Oh, and that tooth's much longer. That's like one and a half thou longer. Wonder what I did there. Wonder if I missed uh, a final spark out pass on that one tooth. All right, gave another quick lick with the grinder. Right, let's chuck that up and test it out. Right, I've chucked up just a piece of mystery steel, probably just ST37 mild steel, something like that. Well, it seemed to cut nicely. There's the bit of a close-up of the surface finish. It's not perfect, but it's much faster. Well, there we have it. I must say, I'm reasonably pleased with how it came out. Now, obviously, if I'd used a diamond wheel that had no radius on the edge, I would have been able to get the gullet going all the way up to the tip better. And in fact, I probably should have ground it maybe a little bit deeper. So at the moment, it uh, has a flat tip on it. But I guess on the next regrind, I'll address that if I can. Anyway, the other thing I was up to this week, I just went through and cleaned off the rear mounted uh, tool post holder, which I guess you would use for like cutoff tools and stuff. And I also went through and disassembled and cleaned all of these, uh, all of these tool holders that I was given. Yeah, I took all of the hardware off them, gave them a good clean up. Man, very nice. Put all the hardware through the ultrasonic cleaner. That all now needs dewatering and oiling. A little bit of rust on these collet chucks. Hey, have you guys uh, cooked into the channel Jeremy Makes Stuff yet? I'll try and put a link up here in the corner. 
check it out. I think it's really cool the stuff he makes and especially the wild scrap that he's got. The most rusted, pitted scrap that he keeps fishing out of a river and the cool stuff he makes with it. So yeah, go and check it out. Another channel I've been really enjoying is a very new channel called Drills, Taps and Dies. Go and have a look at it. He's doing a really cool project over multiple installations on a versatile dividing head. I really like his style. He kind of reminds me a bit of Blondie Hacks in his, in his style of doing the uh, videos. So yeah, check that one out as well. Shoblin's Quick Change Tool Post System. The tool height setting adjustment has got this little circlip in it and a little insert and I think what it's done, I can't, I'm not sure if I can get a good angle on there, I think it puts a little bit of preload on the screw to try and make it backlash free. One down, five to go. Those can all go away, ready for use later. There was a little bit of discussion last week about this collet closes, what would this be, the air supply bearing and its anti-rotation feature. Assuming that the tubes were the only anti-rotation feature, but that's not the case. There's a pin down here with a matching feature machined into this back cover casting. So that's the anti-rotation feature there. A big shout out to one of my fantastic Patreons, Jörg. I took my pink printer around to his place the other day and he helped diagnose what the problem was. So now it's communicating with me again. Thanks very much, Jörg. Jörg also gave me this five inch monitor so that I can monitor the status of my printer. So thanks very much, Jörg. You've contributed to my project itis, which by the way, is the subject of this week's Patreon live stream. So if you're interested in joining my Patreon to see that live stream, there'll be a link somewhere here. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.